On this episode of John's Garage, we tried to get the brake lights working on the Chevelle, and the turn signals, and the horn, and the dash lights, and the high beams. <laughs> So everything we're going to focus on in this episode is in this shot right now, starting with the steering wheel area. I mentioned that we don't have any brake lights, turn signals, hazards, and it's all because of a module inside this console called a turn signal something, <laughs> something like that. But it is broken in there, and that's why you have no signals or brake lights, and we have to fix that for sure because I've been running around town for a couple of weeks with no brake lights. The only way I figured that out is I was editing the last video with this trail featured in it, and I noticed as I pulled into the garage at the house, I knew I hit the brakes, but there were no brake lights. Now my friends have verified when they're behind me, there are none. Somebody should have told me. That's a pretty dangerous deal, so we gotta fix that right away. What else are we gonna work on? Right down here you see triple gauge, actually four gauges. Uh, Dad ran an amp meter, a water temperature, an oil pressure, and a vacuum gauge. We're gonna move all of those over to the right. We're gonna get rid of this accessory light right here and scoot them over. Reason is because my six foot five son-in-law cannot drive this car with the gauges where they are right now. His legs actually come in contact with it. So we're gonna take care of that. Also gonna get rid of this uh, console little plastic thing down here. Might even dye the carpet. It's got some pretty bad sun bleach spots in it. But for sure, we're gonna work on this turn signal brake light situation because that is mission critical. So we're gonna get started by taking the steering wheel off and getting into the guts of the steering wheel. Okay, so I was simply setting the steering wheel puller up for the video and the hub came off. <laughs> <laughs> that is not cool. Apparently, it wasn't really driven far enough down on the steering shaft. And I noticed when I took the steering wheel off, it was even loose. So we probably avoided the disaster by doing this when we did. So anyway, that's basically how you pull the hub off. This is a typical Grant aftermarket steering wheel hub. And you have three bolts and a main center bolt and you just tighten down that center bolt against that shaft and it pops it off so that came off too easy actually and now the next challenge is there's a locking plate that we have to deal with and we'll kind of pull the camera around here just like so yeah it gives you a little better view yeah so this right here is our next challenge and interesting rust in there uh, but this is a this is basically how your steering wheel locks. There's a pin right here, and when you turn the key um, here, it depresses that pin and allows your steering wheel to turn. And there's a special tool. It's down there on the floor, right there, that you use to press this plate forward, and then you take this little um, snap ring off right here, and that plate comes off. So that's what we're going to do next: is take off the locking plate. <laughs> oh, when all else fails, get the instructions that you're sitting on and look at them. I could not figure this out. But I'm going to turn the camera around so you can kind of see how this is supposed to work, I think. It looks like what you do, and I've never done this before, so I don't know how this is going to turn out. But you basically have to turn both of these at the same time. Is what I've been told. <laughs> huh. Kind of 
think of the logic. I think that's it. So you can see that it's depressed in there now and that little snap ring is loose. So they tell me now you get a little hook and pull that out. I think that's it. We'll see. That little snapper ring is now on the other side of the splines. So we will loosen this. And voila, that's what you're looking for right there. So now in theory, all of this just simply pops out, in theory. <laughs> it's not wanting to pop. It, ah, looks like there's another snap ring. Oh my gosh. There's another one. We gotta do it all over again. So, as you saw in the earlier video, there's a second snap ring that is, I think, the real snap ring. That's not really a snap ring at all. Some kind of spacer or something. This is the one we're going after. And I found this Craftsman pick in my toolbox. And it seems to be the most effective in getting under it me to potentially grab it with the edge of a screwdriver something like that it is really tricky okay Let's see if we can get under the other edge of it oh i think we got it yep it's off now so i will unloosen this tool and i'll show you the actual snap ring now that I've actually gotten the real thing off, I would say it's next to impossible without the steering wheel lock plate tool. Some people say you can press real hard. I'm like, uh, uh, there's a lot of force happening right now to get that snap ring loose. So spend the money. I think it's less than 20 bucks for the tool. And you'll have it in your arsenal from now on. I love getting specialty tools like that. All right, so yeah, this is what we've been fighting the whole time. That little snap ring, that is what holds that plate on. There's lots of fragile pieces. Oh, there we go, you just gotta wriggle it. There you go, that's your steering wheel lock plate. So this right here is what we're actually working on. This is a canceller right here. We're gonna go ahead and take that out. That's what turns the signal off. And you can see your turn signal stalk screws in right there. And these little metal contacts, they say, is what wears out. But specifically why this one's not working is there is a spring missing right there. You see that little spring on the top? There is one not down there. So we got a brand new one. And we're going to try to get it in there. And maybe we'll get some turn signals. I sure hope so. Okay, so this is our package that has the new parts in it. It's from Osley Chevelle, uh, which is in North Carolina, where this car spent a lot of its life from 2000, oh no, from 90, I'm sorry. From 1990 something something to 2017. And there you go. So here's your new parts and pieces. And you can see, basically what I was saying is that bottom spring is gone off of the original. And you can see everything's nice and fresh. And we're actually gonna fish this line down the column and connect it underneath the dash. 
that's where having the seat out is going to make a big difference. But first, we're going to loosen up the old one and use it as a fish tape. Okay, so first things first, it's always a good idea to compare your new part with your old part. And it looks like it's kind of clocked this way. And I'm seeing contacts are the same, springs in the same location, brass, brass there, turn signal indicator here. So yeah, I think we're good. So uh, I learned from watching YouTube myself that what people recommend is you loosen this but before you unplug it from underneath the dash which having the seat out is going to help with this tremendously is you tie a piece of um, wire on the end of the uh, the new of uh, the old wiring and as you pull it through it's going to give you a fish tape to put on the end of this wiring and try to fish it back down that console I thought that was a genius idea. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna loosen up these bolts, I'm sorry, screws, take this little stem out, and we're gonna pull this whole thing out. But first, I'm gonna go down below, disconnect it, and tie some wire to it. So you probably saw me fighting this one screw. <laughs> if you ever wonder why you have a drawer full of screwdrivers, of all things, this Craftsman number two, for some reason, was the magic key. And it's pretty worn out. Maybe the first time the thing ever been out of the car, I don't know. But man, that probably took 30 minutes. <laughs> But don't ever throw screwdrivers away. You may think, well, I've got all the number twos I need. No, keep them all. You never know when it might be the perfect one. All right, now I'm gonna try to get that module actually out of there. I don't even know where to look in this camera, obviously. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get the module out of there and put our fish tape on the bottom. So I'm gonna crawl underneath the dash and try to find the other end of this whatever it's called, sig, turn sig. I'm gonna get the official name of this before we go any further. How about that? I'm gonna go to the invoice. <laughs> okay, I found the invoice. It is officially called a 1969 to 72 turn signal switch without tilt. I'd like to have tilt, but I ain't got it right now. So that is what it's called. Now I'm gonna go down there and try to find this end right there and uh, put this, uh, tie this wire to it. So here we go, let's see what happens. And as usual, I've got tools everywhere, mainly number two Phillips screwdrivers. <laughs> oh Lordy, here we go, let's see if I can. Oh, let me try out my new headlamp. I kept seeing these uh, everywhere on Instagram and other places and I decided to try one. Bear with me, because I'm new at this. But it's supposed to be one of those where you can just kind of wave at it. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's bright. I got like three of them for like 20 bucks or something. Something crazy. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, can't imagine trying to do this with the seat in the car. Really can't. Okay. There's all kind of parts falling out. But you can kind of, you'll be able to tell here in a minute how tight of a fit this is. Interesting. It's in a sleeve. The new one is not. I wonder if I can reuse that sleeve. That would sure make it easier to get back in there. Okay, so I think I've actually hit where it's probably getting hung up at the bottom. Huh? Huh? Yes! It is 
out. And there's my fish line right there. Whew. Mountain Dew time. Gotta take a break. Okay. Whew. Sorry I quit recording for a while there. I was totally frustrated. But I was at, finally able to fish it through the column. It is super tight. I'm talking about I had to take a screwdriver and walk it, walk the plastic through these little holes. And then, of course, the fish uh, wire de definitely helped because I could tug on it as I was pushing. So that's it. And then it plugs into that right there. And then we reattach everything on that end. So, whoo, major accomplishment. Just for the record, I went back to my old light. That newfangled one, I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> it's not aimable. Ugh. That was the biggest problem for me. So we're connected at the bottom. Um, using a weird adapter that came with the kit <clears throat> that I didn't think I was going to need. Turns out it did. So that's cool. So now it is time to reinstall all of these good fine parts. And here we go. There we go. So this is how it's supposed to work when you got both springs you can see that it left signal right signal and those springs hold it in place so so far so good next we're going to connect the battery and see if we actually light up some turn signals Alright, so I'm fixing to go under the dash and check the fuse for the brake lights because they're still not working. And this is a very handy tool. Uh, it's a little fuse extractor. And it's only for the glass style fuses that these cars run. They don't have the plug-in color coded. Uh, so anyway, we're going to get under there and pull it out and see if it's burnt out. That could be the problem. Let's check it the out. fuse is good, so that is not the problem gotta keep on diagnosing okay so it's the next morning uh about 10 30 last night i was about done and i remembered some reading i'd done where you could test the brake light switch so basically you put a electrical probe ground it somewhere underneath the um, dash and it should have constant power going into the switch because the way it works is when you press the brake pedal it basically redirects the circuit back to the brake lights with the plunger. So sure enough, it does have power constantly, but when you press the brake pedal, the, the power doesn't go back up through the switch. So I'm going to try to switch that out. No pun intended. <laughs> so we're gonna get into there and uh, take that switch out, run up to AutoZone, they have one in stock. And uh, hopefully, when we do that, we'll have brake lights. We'll see. All right, so all I did was just plug the new um, brake light switch into the existing wiring. And you can see that we have, let me get, move my hand out of the way. You can see that we have power on both sides now. And the reason for that is because the plunger is out. So that would be as if your brake lights were on. So this is a good sign. Also, and I'll show you here in a minute, it's a great way to test whether your brake lights or uh, bulbs are good uh, before you put all this together. And I'm having an issue on the driver's side uh, because with this plunger out, only the passenger side is lit up and I quickly switched the bulb and that didn't solve it. So might have an issue with the socket in the driver's side of the brake lamp, but this is a good sign. So watch what happens when I 
press this plunger in right here, there's no power on this side. Let off. That is how a brake light switch works, and we are making progress. This is what I was talking about. Because that plunger is out, the brake lights are constantly staying on. So that one's nice and bright. This one, not so much. And I've switched the bulb a couple of times, so I have a different issue going on there. And speaking of uh, this area, you see those reverse light bulbs? I'm going to walk over here and show you what the old ones look like. Same on both sides. Yeesh. That may be something else we have to fight later. It looks like they both popped at one time. I don't know. Doesn't encourage me. <laughs> anyway, let's get this brake light switch in there and then we'll start working on that rear socket. A little tip for you. I was trying to figure out how to press the brake pedal down to thread the other side of this because it sits in here with a faster on the other side. And then it dawned on me, disconnect the wires, dummy. And you can just spin the whole module. So you just basically hold the uh, nut on that side and spin the whole thing and tighten it up. <sighs> Always learning. All right, so I'm way under the dash here. And I just want to show you what your goal is when you adjust those two sides of that nut. That's the one I was telling you just to hold. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that when the brake pedal is pushed, that that white plunger comes all the way out. You can kind of see. So this is you driving down the road. Brake lights are off. You push the brake. You want to make sure there's a gap. And you can see that there is right there. That white plunger is not touching the brake pedal. Whew. That's what it is. So basically, you just tighten up both sides of that. Plug your wires in. And hopefully, we'll have success. All right, progress report. I've dimmed the lights in the shops because I want you to be able to see this down here. Brake pedal. I'm going to aim the camera at the very back wall or garage door, that is. And you should see red. Yes. Now, unfortunately, we only have red on one side. So we have an issue. I've left the cover or the lens off of this one because something's going on with that bulb socket. So that's what we're going to focus on next. All right, more progress to report. We have turn signals. You see the indicator in the dash. Okay, go back to the back of the car, though. You can use your uh, oh, test probe. Yes. So we definitely have a signal back here too. And sorry to rush over here like this, but front signals too. Yes. This is starting to be a great day. Category of weirdness. We have brake lights now. <laughs> Both of them. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I didn't really do anything. And then the cool part is. We have turn signals too. Woo! So now we are making real progress. Whew. All right, one more thing we're gonna do while we're here is forever I ran the clear uh, Super Sport lens in the front, there it is right there, with clear bulbs. But I am going to change that up like I did on this side, and I'm going to run the amber bulb behind the clear lens. That way it'll look like a turn signal. That's going to be so cool. And I think while I'm up here, I'm going to try to polish this bumper while the lenses are out because it's pretty rough looking from the old salt air. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, to make quick work of this bumper polishing, I'm going to deploy some pneumatic tool here. This is the Central Pneumatic 3-inch uh, pneumatic polisher kit. Right, right there on the box. <laughs> Sells for about 50 bucks uh, at Harbor Freight. And I've used it to polish headlights on the newer vehicles, which is super cool. And my old trusty chrome polish from Turtle Wax, one of my personal favorites. Going to use that. 
And basically, you just put a little bit on the foam pad right there. Smear it around a little bit. Go like that, and then what we'll do is we'll wipe her off. And then we'll use a little Meguiar's Quick Detail. And it's gonna be a whole lot better. It won't be perfect because the bumper is aged and older, but that's okay. We're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for better. So I'm gonna do this real quick and then we'll put those uh, turn signal lenses back in and maybe start wrapping up the exterior part of the project. Let's go. Man, that made a big difference. Again, not perfect, but it was pitted and just rough looking. And that is way more better. So now we're gonna throw the lenses back in. And uh, I got one more little surprise on the front before we leave and head back to the back of the car. Almost forgot one detail on the front. This is your first look at the amber bulb through the clear lens. I love it. Um, but you'll notice we have a high beam headlight that is out. So we're going to knock that out real quick. Interesting side note, uh, if you ever see a headlight on a GM car that has T3 in the middle of the bulb, that is actually an original light bulb from back in the day. And three of the four are T3s right now. We may eventually upgrade these to a higher um, output light, but for right now, I think Dad had some T3s left over from, from his collection. We're going to throw one in there. turn signal bulbs now blinkers are working bumpers been polished one final touch for the front of the car yes the actual usa one plate that was on the car when i ran it in the 80s yes it is road rashed but that is part of the allure it is a beautiful thing to me so we're going to put that right there and put the finishing touch on the front Just like so. And bam, just like that. The front end is finished. Now we move to the back. I've got a surprise back there too. Hey, as I'm making my way to the back of the car, I've left out a very important improvement. How about new wheels? That's right. We put American Racing Torque Thrust on it. A friend of mine gave me the hook up on these. He was pulling them off of a car he was rebuilding and wanted a different set of wheels. So yes, we have gone with an American Racing Torque Thrust wheel. A little fatter tire on the back, love it. The car has had a bunch of different wheels on it over the years. It started off with wheel covers originally, uh, which there's actually one up in the shop right there <laughs> on that shelf. And then I pulled the wheel covers off and put little chrome lug nut covers with just a black bear wheel and then i put rallies on the back with stamp steel and dog dish on the front and then finally we did keystone raiders 15 by 6 on the front and 15 by 10 on the back and that's how the car lived most of its life back in the 80s but now she has torque thrust on her just had to show you that because i haven't mentioned it yet uh, now to, back to the rear of the car and a little surprise 
right, you can't give all that love to the front of the car and not think about the back. And I have purchased new, I can get the package open, tail light lenses. Yeah, you can see the original's pretty tired. Still in good shape, definitely gonna keep those. But for 50 bucks on eBay, look at that. Oh. That is gonna look real nice in there, but most importantly, it's gonna be brighter because that's all aged and light's not passing through as well as it used to. And now when the reverse lights come on or the brake lights come on, it's gonna be nice and bright. Whew. So we're gonna screw these in real quick and then we're gonna go to the interior and do the things I said we were gonna do, which is take the console out and move those gauges over. And then maybe we can take a break. Thought before I changed the passenger side, I would show you the old versus the new. Look at that. That is so much better. Okay, so what we're gonna do is this is not the permanent set of gauges that's gonna be run in the car. I've got another set that I'm gonna get that's gonna match the tachometer I'm gonna run eventually. But they're gonna do for now, but I'm not gonna screw them into the bottom of the dash because I don't wanna have to unscrew them again later. So we're going to use 3M tape like you would on an emblem on the side of a car. Put it on the bottom of the uh, gauge bracket holder. Stick it up there for now. We are gonna get rid of the amp meter that was never connected and I, I'm gonna put the vacuum gauge in the hole where the amp meter was and reconnect it. And uh, that's going to be it. We're going to be done with this gauge project that turned out to take way longer than it was supposed to. Here we go. Falling in the nothing is ever easy category. Um, <laughs> this vacuum gauge that I decided to keep because the amp meter wasn't even attached in the first place did not have a bracket that held it in place. So I went to go use this one, but it's for the amp meter which is more narrow and, interestingly enough, lopsided. Weird. So I've got to cut and even that up and make two new holes just to get a vacuum gauge in there that I'm probably not gonna keep long-term. Whew, here we go. total fail <laughs> and all for a vacuum gauge that I don't even really want but I'm going to get this thing back in there because I'm determined at this point so I'm just gonna fab up something that'll hold this tight it's not that complicated of a process but I've turned it into one well would you look at there a flat corner brace used to mend two boards together has the exact bolt spread that I need now I'm just going to shave the ends off and we're going to cinch up nuts right up against uh, that. Is that going to work? No. It's got to have the L shape to it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I still got work to do. Never mind. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to know when to stop. I'm stopping. I surrender. All three of those gauges... None of them are properly mounted. They're all gonna rattle probably. But you know, it's okay because they're temporary. They are not staying. So I am not gonna waste any more time trying to get those gauges to fit in that gauge cluster. They all still work. That's the most important thing. So they will monitor the life of the engine or the health of the engine. Whoo, man, this episode I thought was gonna be easy and turned out to be a challenge. Uh, but it was fun chasing the uh, the wiring situation and figuring out that we had a bad brake uh, switch underneath the dash. Um, we do have good turn signals now. That worked out real good. Now they do cancel and 
all the things they're supposed to do. New lenses in the back, a headlight replaced in the front, amber bulbs in the front, the USA One plate. Yeah, that was probably my most favorite part of the whole episode was putting that back on there. Uh, but yeah. So I appreciate you watching this episode. I appreciate you keeping up with uh, this project and all the other ones that we tackle. And uh, I think it's going to be a wrap on this one. Now, I'm not putting the seat back in or the steering wheel back on because the next thing we're tackling is the air conditioning. And yes, under the dash, a lot happens there. And it's a whole lot easier to crawl around on this uh, floor without a seat and a wheel in the way. So we're going to leave that out for now. Might even change a steering wheel. Hmm, perhaps. Uh, what steering wheel would you put in it? Put in the comments what you would put in a 70 Chevelle. If there's a brand or a style or a whatever you suggest. Because right now it has an aftermarket-ish looking, um, I think it's Grant is the brand. But it's supposed to kind of look like the upgraded wheel that Chevy offered. Uh, but it really doesn't. <laughs> But anyway, might change that. Love to hear your comments on that. But again, thanks for tuning in. If you haven't subscribed already, do that for us and tell your friends about us. But most importantly, stay tuned and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of John's Garage. Thanks for watching. One more thing. As I was wrapping up shooting, I got a notification from eBay that this keychain fob showed up. How cool is that?